Hear me out. I think time might be bigger than space. I know how that sounds. I can already sense a bunch of pedantic physics undergrads in the audience angrily filling the comment section with science words. Um, space time is one thing, Zandros, so how could- <laughs> Listen to me, baby cakes. Do you know what else is one thing? Your mother and I. We're making it official. Anyway, the reason why I think time is bigger than space, or at least in some sense, is due to the fact that the range of orders of magnitude at which stuff is meaningfully happening is way bigger for time than it is for space. Don't let my big words intimidate you. Come on, I'll show you what I mean. So just in case you skipped high school physics, or maybe you need to blow the cobwebs off a few important neurons, an order of magnitude is a way of saying very roughly how big something is. Like if someone says, I don't know, maybe they watched a movie with a big spaceship in it, and you ask how big, and they say, really big, and you're like, okay genius, I'm asking for some point of reference. I don't need you to tell me precisely how many millimetres long it is, but like, is it the size of a big house, or could I put the observable universe inside of it? In cases like this, you're asking for the order of magnitude. Now, obviously, super huge numbers have a lot of digits in them, and the same is is actually true for super small numbers, and that can be kind of clunky, especially if you need to write these numbers down. If you want to communicate, I don't know, let's say you want to communicate how wide cities are in meters, not any particular city, but you just want to generalize and say roughly how big cities are, you might say, I don't know, 10,000 meters, like 10 kilometers. That's intuitively about right. Some cities will be bigger, some cities will be smaller, but the average width of a city, I've not looked it up, it's probably around that number, or at least 1,000 meters would be too small, and 100,000 meters would probably be too big, I think. Now we could try and fill in the actual digits, but just the number of digits involved is easily the more important factor, and it's all we really need to know the very vague size of something. Now there's a neat trick to not having to write out some entire gigantic number, like the current estimate for the age of the universe, which is 13 billion 800 million years. So if you take a number and raise it to the power of 1, that doesn't change anything. 10 to the power of 1 is still 10. 10 to the power of 0 is 1. 10 to the power of 1 is 10. 10 to the power of 2 is 100. 10 to the power of 3 is 1000. 10 to the power of 4 is 10,000, and so on. So if you want to write a big number like this, you can just budge the decimal point up until you have a small manageable number, maybe something between 1 and 10, and then just add times 10 to the power of the number of times you needed to budge up the decimal point. So the age of the universe is 1.38 times 10 to the power of 10 years, or 13.8 times 10 to the power of 9 years, if you prefer, because that happens to put it in the number of billions of years. And if we want to make this whole thing even easier, say we only need to know really vaguely how old something is, or how big something is, we could just round, for example, the age of the universe to 1 times 10 to the power of 10 years, at which point you don't even need the 1 times, just say 10 to the power of 10 years. If someone had no idea how old the universe is, and you told them 10 to the power of 10, it basically just tells you it's a 1 with 10 zeros after it, and you'd be right enough for the purpose of giving them just kind of the right vibe for how old it is. Unless the guy you're telling this to is about to break out a time machine and go back to the beginning of time, the slight inaccuracy is not really going to matter that much. So the question is, how many orders of magnitude can we say stuff is meaningfully happening in space-wise? Well, what's the smallest thing? Atoms? Well, those are about 10 to the power of minus 10 meters wide, but they're still made of smaller sh**. The individual protons in the middle are about 10 to the power of minus 15 meters wide. Fundamental particles are basically just point objects without a size, at least as far as we've been able to measure them, which is down to a precision of about 10 to the power of minus 18 or 19 meters-ish. The Planck length is thought to be the smallest meaningful distance in the universe, and that's about 10 to the power of minus 35 meters. On the other end of things, the diameter of the Earth is about 10 to the power of 7, the Sun is about 10 to the 9, the solar system out to the Oort cloud is about 10 to the 13 meters, the galaxy is about 10 to the 21 meters across, Andromeda is about 10 to the 22 meters away. Once we get out to galactic superclusters, we're talking about 10 to the 20 25, the entire observable universe is maybe 10 to the 27 meters wide. So all in all, there's about 63 different orders of magnitude that stuff exists in spatially. Anything outside of that range is either too big or too small to really fit in the universe, I guess. But what about time? For some quick context, we know that intergalactic space is expanding. How do we know this? Um, I sent my mate Gary up there with a ruler, I'm inclined to believe his findings. Galaxies aren't literally moving away from each other, actually space is being created in the giant voids between galaxies. We I actually know this because some f***ing dude named after a telescope looked at some galaxies and figured some sh** out. God damn it, I love it when historical people do all my maths for me. So the Hubble constant is how fast space is expanding between you and some distant object on average. Now if we know that the universe is getting bigger, imagine running time backwards and the universe must have been 
smaller in the past, and that has some consequences. At a certain point, it would have been very hot. Further back, electrons would have been uncoupled from atomic nuclei. Further back, protons and neutrons were on their own. Further back, it was only their constituent subatomic particles. Go far enough back, and the universe is so dense that if physics were to work the way it does now, the entire universe would have been a giant black hole. Of course, that probably couldn't have been the case, since it's hard to see how the Big Bang could have even happened if that was the case, but the honest answer is to say that anything further back than like 10 to the power of negative 43 of a second after the Big Bang, we really don't know anything about it. All we can do is speculate, because there's kind of nothing we can even do to figure out anything about it. If the Big Bang did happen more or less the way we think it did, the process of it happening seemingly caused the laws of physics to crystallise in the form they're now in, because that shit definitely wouldn't fly now. Sorry to interrupt, this is just a quick message to say, statistically speaking, you're probably not subscribed, so I'll make you a deal. Press the subscribe button and I won't come over to your house and do this. <laughs> Alright, thanks. Back to the video. Anyway, that kind of sets the stage. So, in the beginning, frankly, none of us know what the hell happened. Maybe this was just the moment time started. Maybe a morbidly obese interdimensional being sat on one of those marbles from the end of Men in Black. Whatever happened, it happened very quickly. So the universe had to catch its breath for the next few hundred thousand years before the first stars and galaxies even started showing up. Then the first stars show up around hundreds of thousands of years in, so about 10 to the power of 6. And that's the point where we go from the primordial era to the stelliferous era, which is the era that we're in. And spoiler warning, it's not getting old anytime soon soon. Given how old the universe is as I'm recording this, we're about 10 to the power of 10 years in. Red dwarves are the longest lasting stars and they live for about 100 trillion years, so notwithstanding star lifting and other weird technologies we could very plausibly use to extend stellar lifespans in the distant future, we know that stars aren't penciled in to run out of fuel until about 10 to the power of 13 years in the future. Then we get to the degenerate era, named after me presumably. All the actual proper stars are dead, so it's all white dwarves and sh**. Well, neutron stars too, and black holes. Only the really long lived Shit. That milk in your fridge is definitely not going to be good to drink by this point. I don't care whether you've opened it or not. All the explodey suns that actually manufacture heat and light have gone ahead and blown up, and now there's just the depleted cores of what used to be stars floating around. White dwarves are still glowing and radiating heat, but once they've radiated all of it away, since they can't produce any more, they're just going to fade into a black dwarf. They could potentially still function as some sort of heat source for our distant descendants while they're still radiating, so yeah, despite the universe being in a stage of degeneration, we could potentially still stay alive and have civilization. White dwarves could still support some kind of weird post-human society, unlike black dwarves sitting there like a big heavy cold lump of shit. And if any of you clip that sentence out of context to make it sound racial, I will personally follow you to a secluded location and malice you with a shoehorn. Anyway, would you look at the time? It's 10 to the power of 40 years after the Big Bang, it's time for the black hole era. Just to remind you, 10 to the power of 40 is not twice as old as 10 to the power of 20, it gets 10 times older every single time the number goes up by 1. To compare it to distance, and I think I did the maths right on this, if the age of the entire universe as it is for us right now is the width of a human hair, 10 to the power of 40 years is like the diameter of our entire observable universe. Okay, so by the black hole era, it is old as shit and we are not even remotely close to being done yet. At this point, pretty much the whole universe is just black holes, that and a few drifting stellar remnants that manage to escape being consumed. The black holes will combine as much as possible until what used to be our local galactic group is basically just folded into one ultra-massive black hole, and then all the black holes that form will just evaporate via Hawking radiation. We'll do it very slowly at first, but it kind of goes exponential. It's like when you spin a metal coin on a hard surface and it kind of goes... Whoop. Only instead of it making a cool noise, it does almost nothing for 10 to the power of 100 years, gradually gets smaller, and then f***ing explodes at the end. Sounds like an energy source to me, dog. The post-post-post-post-post-human future equivalent of oil companies will be all over this provided it's physically possible to survive this long. And that's not trivial. The observable universe only has about 10 to the power of 80 atoms in it, so if you wanted to build a machine around a black hole to harvest its energy and keep some sort of civilization going until the black hole explodes most of its energy out at the very end, even if you manage to prevent the formation of every other black hole in the universe so you could pull all of the matter in the universe to use in this one machine to extract the energy from just one black hole, you still couldn't afford to lose more than one atom to wear and tear more than once every million, million, billion years? Again, I think I did the maths right. And even then, 10% of the machine would be missing or broken by the time the big kaboom rolls around. Would your car turn on if I removed 10% of it at random? Mine barely works now. Although that's mostly because I wash it so infrequently that the view out of the front windscreen is just a tapestry of bird sh but never mind. Anyway, the last era is the Dark Era, which will ostensibly go on forever, with nothing meaningful ever happening ever again, outside of particles just travelling in straight lines away.
away from each other out to infinity like all the attractive single women do whenever I enter a room, but there's still actually a reasonable possibility that something else is going to happen. See, we're not sure yet if proton decay is a thing that happens. Basically, protons in an atom might decay into subatomic particles, so eventually atoms might cease to exist. The reason that we're not sure is that if that happens, the half-life of this process is about 10 to the power of 34 years. Quick reminder, our universe is currently 10 to the power of 10 years old, so this is kind of hard to study. Imagine being hired just to stare at a test tube full of bullshit until the degenerate era of the universe rolls around just to see if anything happens. Anyway, proton decay is predicted by some models of physics, but we don't know if it's actually a thing. If it's not, there's likely to still be black dwarves meandering around in the endless void at the end of time. And technically, since all atoms theoretically decay into iron via quantum tunneling or whatever over even vaster, seriously post-cosmologically f***ing gargantuan amounts of time, black dwarves will theoretically slowly transmogrify into giant spheres of iron over a span of about 10 to the power of 1,500 years. Technically, each time an atom decays, it releases some energy, so a future civilization that somehow survived the black hole era could theoretically go on to farm these iron stars for energy, but you'd need to survive lengths of time, I assume exceeding the entire age of the black hole era, on like one photon worth of energy. So that's going to have to be one efficient simulated reality or whatever it is that you're running. Your hardware is going to need to be at least 10 to the power of 1,400 times more efficient than the universal black hole machine we just came up with, and that still doesn't account for how we stop the machine itself from decaying into iron. Technically, if we want to be really pedantic, even more stuff could happen further into the future than that. Not even really due to physical processes at this point, more just because of the sheer insane odds involved with a theoretically infinite amount of time. If you wait like 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 50 years, you're statistically likely to have something as complex as a human brain just spontaneously form in the void from particles just happening to be at the exact right place at the exact right time. Apparently if you waited 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 120 years, the entire universe statistically could spontaneously just reform. Although that assumes a steady state universe and it's looking like the universe is actually expanding, so that one might be cheating a little bit. But anyway, there you have it. Space has 63 useful orders of magnitude by my very rough calculations, and time hypothetically has so many that if you created a new universe once every second and did so from now until the degenerate era and then you wrote a single digit on every single subatomic particle in every single one of those universes, you could just about write it down. That's not the actual amount of time, that's just the space you'd need to write the number down. I think I did that right, my brain hurts. Anyway, yeah, so time's bigger than space sort of. Not really. It's kind of a meaningless statement, actually. My point is, if you want an existential crisis, thinking about the size of the universe is pussy shit. All my real homies just sit in a room and wait. Nope, too much ADHD for that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you want. I've got a bunch of cool YouTube membership perks if you want to join the channel. As always, I'll catch you in the next one. Over and out.